All right, if you could say your name and uh, what you do for me. My name is Ramit Sethi. I'm the founder of a personal finance blog called I Will Teach You To Be Rich. And no, it's not a scam. Appreciate that. Um, why does personal finance and money management seem to be such a struggle with college-age students? I think, first of all, it's just boring. You know, if you have to manage your money, what we typically think of when it comes to personal finance is someone telling us no. No, you can't spend money on lattes. No, you can't go on vacation for spring break. No, you can't do this. No, you can't do that, which is really not the case, but that's what we think about it. Uh, it's also not tied to today. If we save money today, what does it really matter? We're still in college. Um, it's confusing. Should I manage my Roth IRA? Should I change my asset allocation? Uh, should I consolidate my loans? And then I think it's full of people trying to take your money. So there's all these reasons that conspire against us to have us just not manage our money, which ironically is the worst thing we can do. Um, in what ways are college students hurting themselves financially that they don't really know? Well, they're not saving. They're not investing. Uh, and these are the years where it really, really pays off to invest. You can invest even just for 10 years when you're in college and never again after that. And you will actually make more money than someone who invests for 30 years if they start in their 30s. And that's an astounding fact. But, um, you know, we don't start. And I think in general, we put it off until tomorrow. And it becomes increasingly harder to change our habits as we get older. How and when did you start to learn about personal finance in your life? And when did you start to make a change? Well, I come from a family of six and a pretty middle income family. So my parents told us that if we wanted to go to college, we had to get scholarships. So I have, because I'm a huge weirdo, I applied to about 70 scholarships. And uh, the first scholarship I got, that was for $2,000. And they wrote that check to me. I turned around as a high school senior and invested that in the stock market. And I lost half my money. <laughs> so that was when I figured I better learn something about money and uh, went through the next year or two really learning by reading all the books, watching the TV shows, reading the magazines, and learning about the basics of personal finance and the fact that uh, there's a lot of hype, but there's really you know a few simple steps that help get you rich, whatever that means to you. Was it frustrating for you as a college student to see some of your friends not taking the same strides as you are to uh, educate yourself about personal finance? Yeah, I used to get really frustrated um, because I, in college, uh, around my junior year, I came up with this concept called I Will Teach You To Be Rich. And I picked the name because I wanted it to be tongue-in-cheek and I wanted it to be fun, not some boring corporate name. And I would tell my friends, hey, why don't you come to my class? It's free. I'm not selling anything. I just want to show you what I've learned. Um, and how you can basically take these few simple steps to really set your money and automate it. And uh, people say, yeah, that sounds awesome. I don't teach you rich. Awesome. And then they would never show up. And this went on for about a year, year and a half. It was very frustrating because people just would not show up. And finally, I switched to a blog format. And only later did I realize what was going on. And that was whether it's college students or people in their 40s who know they need to learn more about money because they have families, people don't attend events about personal finance because it makes them feel bad about themselves. Um, what is your blogging audience like um, as far as demographics and knowledge about personal finance? Yep, they tend to be um, in the range of typically 20 to 35. Uh, they tend to make above average incomes. Um, you'll find people who are, for example, they don't really concern themselves with you know, spending money on lattes every day, and I don't try to tell them not to do that. Um, they really have big places that they can cut down on their expenses, and also they tend to be a little entrepreneurial. So a lot of them are curious about how to start a business on the side, how to make income on the side, um, certainly that kind of thing, rather than saving money on you know, small, small items. Um, and in terms of their expertise and skill level, it's all over the board. Anywhere from people who just know that they need to do something to people who are looking for the technical details on asset allocation in a portfolio. So all the way from beginning to end. Can you tell me a little bit about your book and how that came to be? Yeah. I, so I've been writing the blog since uh, 2004. I've been writing the blog. And around 2006, I got an email from an editor in New York saying, hey, have you thought about writing a book? 
And I was actually in the process of writing my first book, which was on college recruiting. And I kind of started thinking, huh, maybe it is time to write a book on this. But uh, I decided to you know, take some time and do it right. And so it took me about two years to write the book. Um, and it's coming out in uh, this year, in 2009, um, in April. The focus of the book is rather than giving high-level advice about what you should do and what you shouldn't spend money on, it's instead a six-week program. So first week, you optimize your credit cards. You pick the right cards, you pay off your debt, I show you how to make it all work. Second week, you look at your bank accounts. You figure out how to negotiate fees. I show you exactly what to say when you call up the banks. I show you which accounts are good, which accounts I would stay away from. You set up your investment accounts in week three. You go on this conscious spending. In other words, um, and I think this is an important point, rather than keeping a budget, which everyone tells you to do, but nobody actually does, my point was figure out what you love and spend extravagantly on it. If you love vacations, great. You should spend on that. You should save up for it and spend on it and don't feel guilty about it. But if there are things you don't care about, like my friend doesn't care about living in a fancy apartment, so he lives in a piece of crap little place, you can save tons of money by, by spending extravagantly on the things you love and cutting costs on the things you don't. So you go all the way from week one to week six, which helps you set up your investments, and then I show you how to automate all of it so you're not doing it on a day-to-day -day basis. Money management education is a topic that kind of plagues, um, I would say, the American school systems. People aren't sure how to teach it. Um, people don't want to step, overstep boundaries. What role should parents play in teaching personal finance to their children? They should play a large one, but they really don't know what they're talking about when it comes to money. You know, the, the best place children can learn about money is by seeing and watching how their parents handle it and talk about it and think about it. And you see profoundly different behaviors with uh, people who make above $100,000 a year versus below $100,000 a year. But the simple fact is most people are simply not educated about personal finance themselves. So we can't really expect them to go and teach their children effective personal finance behaviors on their own. Do you think that uh, colleges need to, be, need to step in and educate, children, and educate students about personal finance? Yeah, it's a mystery as to why they haven't. I mean, we graduate with all these requirements in all these different areas, and I understand that schools are not technical schools. You know, our universities are not technical schools. But what could be more fundamental than managing money, particularly in this environment? Um, I think that there should be more mandatory mo uh, money management classes. Notice I said classes, not class, because teaching people once is not enough to change behavior. Uh, and this is really an attitudinal and behavioral change that needs to happen when it comes to managing money. It's not natural to know exactly what to do with your money. There's a lot of stuff that really has to be taught. And um, that would be, I think, at a baseline. There are actually more intrusive models of other organizations that manage money. Let me tell you about one. My friend is in the Air Force, and he tells me that um, the Air Force literally, if you are getting behind on your bills, they know about it. And they will come to you and say, you better get your life in order, otherwise you're going to be in big trouble. So they have access to all the person's uh, account information. And that is a certainly much more intrusive model. I don't think most people would be comfortable with that. But you can see that it goes all the way from the gamut of what we've got right now, where no one really helps you or tells you what to do or even offers you defaults that enable you to do the right thing, all the way up to the Air Force or the military, which is poking holes into all the